Each nation in Teva is unique and one of a kind, especially in regards to culture, geography, and politics. Certain nations mirror others, Liyue and Inazuma being one example, Sumeru and Fontaine being another. Both nations are a near perfect foil of the other in a way where they stand alone just as strong. But there's something about Fontaine that I haven't been able to stop thinking about and that stood out to me the moment we stepped foot into the nation when patch 4.0 was released, and that was the people. Compared to Monscat, Liyue, and even Inazuma, the era of Fontaine had a sense of desperation, constant looming fear, and, and what seems to be an individualistic society that I fear, we haven't seen before in Genshin Impact. That isn't to say that everyone within Fontaine is inherently selfish and a bad person, that's not the case at all. In fact, one of the first interactions we have as a traveler stepping foot into Fontaine for the first time, after a certain someone's entrance, Gosalor, hereby welcome you to the nation of Hydro, and acknowledge the value and significance of your trip. Now, you may rejoice in this. Was helping Lynette and Linny give out magic pockets to nearby citizens in preparation of the prophecy coming true. There are plenty of other times during story quests and world quests in Fontaine where the people we meet are just as kind and honor-bound as those we meet in other nations. The theater troupe from Farina's story quest being an example. But the nonchalance with which citizens of Fontaine view the court cases and the sentences dealt to the guilty parties as if they're mere plays or staged drama for entertainment is disturbing and unsettling to say the least. In your opinion, do you think it's right to treat a trial like it's an opera? And this sentiment is truly at its peak during the first act of the Archon Quest, in which Linny and Lynette stand trial as suspects for the serial disappearances of young women. Every single person in that courtroom turned on them like a dime and watched with bated breath as the previously well-loved and almost revered magicians oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> now face the wrath, suspicion, and blame for a crime that they didn't commit. A magician's greatest skill is making things disappear or appear. The possibilities are endless. Granted, that isn't to say that they're completely innocent and good people. At the end of the day, they are a part of the Fatui, and I'm not one to enjoy all oh, Fatui or bad rhetoric at all. And especially in this case, where the three siblings are victims and subsequently products of their environment, yada yada. But I don't think blackmail and preparing to become Arlequino's successor in the future are exactly good people things. But going back to when we first stepped foot into the nation, it's during this initial moment that we gather key information about the nation and the people of Fontaine. One, the people of Fontaine were born with a sin that can never be absolved. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only Farina will remain, weeping on her throne. And two, the only way the citizens of Fontaine can be cleansed of their sin is when all of them are dissolved by the rapidly raising waters of Fontaine stemming from the primordial sea. Then, will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away? And only the Hydro Archon will be left, weeping alone on her throne. The general public's opinion to this prophecy varies wildly, some not believing it, some not caring at all, and even some who view it in a positive light. So it's no wonder why the people of Fontaine have such an individualistic society. When your future is so uncertain and your possible death is looming over you, patiently waiting to erase everything and everyone you've ever loved and held dear, what's the point in preparing for your doom? Isn't it better just to live life to the fullest? Do all that you can and want to do? View yourself as your priority? Might as well live a happy and short life than a tragic and long one, right? Both similar and so different, the Fontaine Archon Quest truly encapsulates what I feel as a perfect representation of isolation, a yearning to belong somewhere, anywhere, and the damning habit of self-sabotage for the greater good without looking at the bigger picture. This habit of self-sabotage for the individual's perceived greater good repeats continuously throughout different quests in Fontaine, but one where it seemed the most prevalent to me was actually a Nouvellet's story quest. If you played any character story quest within Genshin Impact, you know that the overarching themes and tribulations within a character story quest are thinly veiled conflicts of the playable character's inner workings of their mind. Whether the actual NPCs were helping are humans, animals, or a third, more sinister thing, sometimes this can fall flat, but unsurprisingly, Nouvellet's was done beautifully. 
To give a general summary, Nouvellet's story quest follows a Melusine by the name of Chiara, who's received a threatening letter, similar to one that was received by her friend Carol 400 years ago. It is this event where we learn why Nouvellet is so fiercely protective of the Melusines, other than being world's best girl dag and Fontaine. Nouvellet was appointing the role of Eudex 400 years ago and brought with him two Melusines in order to assist him in his duties, Carol and Chiara. Carol was partnered up with Vautrin, the leader of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol, who characterized if she was his younger sister. Carol was quickly made victim to abuse and maltreatment by various Fontaine citizens who thought of the Melusines as monsters. This very quickly leads to her unfortunate death and Vautrin being exiled. The concept of Melusines being treated poorly was enough for me to want to roll up my sleeves and find whoever wrote this letter myself to give him a nice talking to. So what are you going to do about it? We're reporting it. Are you going to arrest me? But something Nouvellet says, and why he refuses to seek help for it, stopped me in my tracks completely. He says that it would be better and arouse less suspicion if he handles this on his own, because he's an outsider. Now, I'm not sure about you, but if I lived somewhere for 400 years and was basically the vice president, I wouldn't consider myself an outsider at all. But then again, I'm also not the reincarnation of an elemental dragon, so maybe I'm the silly one here. Because that's exactly the reason why Nouvellet feels that he's an outsider, stating that his position as Eodex is designed to prevent him from forming bonds with the people of Fontaine, despite Farina urging him otherwise. Outsider? But aren't you the Chief Justice of Fontaine? Why would you be an outsider? I understand where you are coming from, but there is not necessarily a connection between my responsibilities and how I perceive myself. You know very well about my true identity, and have even met others of my kind in other nations. Even though I was born with a human form, there is a fundamental difference between dragons and humans. Taking on the role of Chief Justice does not make me a part of this community. In fact, the status I was granted has prevented me from forming deeper bonds with others. I have lived in Fontaine for a long time, but I do not belong here. That is why I call myself an outsider, a fish out of water. There's such a tragic and melancholic sense of longing to Nouvellet. Barely able to understand his own emotions, it's almost impossible for him to understand the emotions of the humans he's watched over for hundreds of years. This becomes a point of tension between himself and Navia when she understandably holds a grudge and holds Nouvellet accountable for the death of her father. Miss Navia, I can understand how you feel. Your father, Callus, was a truly exceptional man. We deeply regret his passing. Hmm. And what are you trying to say, Monsieur Novillet? Are you trying to console me? Extend your sympathy? Or just express some tendril of regret? No. You are not trying to do any of that. I can hear it in your voice. There's no emotion behind your words. You only said those things because you felt like you should. It's just like last time. After my father took his place in the duelist ring, I pushed through the guards to talk to you as a last resort. You even told me then that you thought there was something fishy with the case, yet you still allowed the duel to go ahead. In your eyes, the value of a human life is nothing compared to those cold laws you hold so dear. And it's not that Nouvellet doesn't feel or experience emotions, that much is obvious with how often it rains in Fontaine but more so that he has no idea how to properly express them and comprehend them. Similar to the Melusines, he wants so badly to be close to humans, to understand them and live peacefully beside them for years to come. And in turn, maybe his observations will allow him to understand his own existence and rebirth as a human. It's towards the end of Nouvellet's story quest and after we pop into prison real quick. Welcome to the Fortress of Meripede, dear esteemed guests. where we see the people of Fontaine passionately defending Chiara and very visibly upset that anyone would even think to endanger the Melusines, who do so much for Fontaine. It's quite a silly and heartwarming scene and reflects an earlier scene where Risley tells Nouvellet that he's not an outsider, 
and the citizens of Fontaine would be more than happy to help him in any way possible. Monsieur Nivillette, you were concerned that there might be a shadowy faction looking to capitalize on the delicate situation with the Melazines to stir up greater chaos? Yes, I experienced a similar incident in the past, so I had to be prepared for any possibility. And how long ago was this incident? More than 400 years. You might be overthinking this. Time can change a lot of things. Everything's different now. What do you mean? 400 years ago, you and the Melazines you brought to Fontaine were the outliers in society. But in the present day, if someone were to threaten the safety of the Melazines, people wouldn't just sit back and do nothing. I trust that they would make different choices from before. That's right! We saw lots of people standing up for Melazines on our way back to the Palais Mermonia. Monsieur Nivillette, the Melazines are a species you introduced to Fontaine. How the public treats them is also reflective of their attitude towards you. When people refused to place their trust in Melazines, it was because they were still on the fence about you, their unfamiliar Chief Justice. For almost 500 years, you've conducted every trial with impartiality. You made the right judgment each time regardless of whatever nonsense went on. People no longer have any reservations about you and even consider you a symbol of the law. Right now, your every decision will impact all of Fontaine. In other words, you've gradually transformed the whole nation. Hyman gets it now. No wonder no one wanted to join forces with Dominico. I am undeserving of such high compliments. From my perspective, I have simply been fulfilling my duties. It isn't anything special or worthy of praise. I'm simply fulfilling the promises I've made and searching for answers through my judgments. It is unnecessary to hold me in such high regard. The complexity of human emotions and willpower far exceed those of mine. As a matter of fact, I believe that you are the ones who deserve my respect. There's no need to be so modest. The current state of affairs says it all. You're no longer that outsider you were before. Even if you wished to investigate something on your own, many would take the initiative to lend you a hand. It was very touching to me when near the end of his quest, and as the skies close up and rain begins to pour down while Nouvellet relives the grief of losing dear companions centuries ago, and experiences the relief and care shown both to himself and the Melazines of today, a child exclaims, Hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry! Despite it being an extremely well-kept secret that Nouvellet is the Hydro Dragon, it's a definite portrayal of the love that the people have for Nouvellet, both as the unknown Hydro Dragon and the kind and just Chief Justice. Farina also leaves a very sweet and endearing letter to Nouvellet that's pretty easy to miss, which reads, Personal reasons? Oh me oh my! Has our Chief Justice finally come to his senses? If I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. You should follow my example and go out more often. You need to get to know your people better. Even if something unfortunate happens, you'll still run into lots of unique characters along the way. What do you think? The human world isn't too bad now, is it? The strong contrast between Farina, who's constantly out and about, putting on shows of bravado and celebration, to Nouvellet, who seems to be quite reserved and keeps himself, is a telling one. And no doubt shows the strength of their bond. Is the trial over already? My dear Eudix, I must remind you, no trial can be sufficiently dramatic if it is too short. You are right, Lady Farina. But speaking of the devil, the one person in all of Fontaine who's completely unique and a true individual among the masses is the Hydro Archon herself. Arena. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most spectacular show in the history of Fontaine. Please put your hands together for our national icon, Fontaine's biggest celebrity, one of the seven archons of Tibet, the routine of all orders, kindred, peoples, and laws, Arena de Fontaine! Ladies and gentlemen, her. Unbeknownst to the entirety of Fontaine and even her closest allies, Farina has been putting on a centuries-long performance that has left her beaten and bruised in more ways than one. 
Throughout the entirety of the Archon Quest, we're led to believe that the person responsible for the Nation of Fontaine, the god meant to protect and serve her people to keep them from harm, has been doing nothing of the sort to attempt to prevent the prophecy of coming true. Miss Farina, as the Hydro Archon, I am sure you understand the exact meaning of the phenomenon we just witnessed. Or should I say, that's what I originally thought. But looking at your expression, was I wrong? And you haven't a clue? What are you trying to say? At this point, I don't think there's any more need to speak as diplomatic representatives. Allow me to speak to you now as just a Fontanian. You know the prophecy by heart, and also that every part of it is being proven true. Yet, here you are, relaxing, drinking tea, and eating desserts as if it's all nothing more than a few stray bugs in your garden. Do you really think that's acceptable? The prophecy's hanging above our necks like a guillotine. Every faction is looking for a way to either avert the disaster or save their own. Even the orphans of the House of the Heart have devoted everything to saving their homeland. But you? It beggars belief just how nonchalant and carefree you have been. From the very beginning, you, the god Fosalor, you have utterly failed to take action. Weighing judgment and enjoying these operas of madness and delusion with her lofty ideals and haughty language, not a care in the world regarding the safety of her people and the rising threat of the prophecy nearing its completion? And one could say, she's doing it out of mercy. Why remind the thousands of people living under your rule that their demise is imminent? One could also say she's doing it out of negligence. After all, it wouldn't be surprising that an Archon that acts so childish and oblivious wouldn't believe in such a prophecy either, but I say, and it's later proven, that she's doing it out of duty. Farina has been charged with the most cruel fate out of every single individual in Fontaine, destined to put on a show of bravado and bravery, to shed your identity as a mere mortal and the gift of humanity in order to play God for 500 years. I could go on and on about this for ages, but to save myself talking in circles, there was never a moment in her lifetime where Farina wasn't fighting tooth and nail to prevent the prophecy despite literally being unable to. Oh, so there's still hope after all. Goodness, you frightened me. You spoke so much and with so much certainty. As for the suffering, well, I will admit that the first thing that came to mind was, why do I have to be the one to suffer? But if the prophecy will come true, I'll also die anyway, right? So if I've already met you as my magical meeting in this world, if there were scales with all the people of Fontaine on one side and my pain on the other, is it not obvious where the scales should tilt? And refusing to risk the 500 year ruse she was destined to play. So, how long am I going to have to play this role? To accomplish this mission, you will have to stay on the stage for many, many years. You will endure and not grow old until your task ends. But I promise you, all will eventually end in a magnificent and dramatic trial, and everyone will be saved. Despite feeling hopeless, lonely, and I'm sure like a failure, Farina never stopped trying, even until the bitter end. In a world where even the heavens are against you, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place with seemingly no way to get out, and there's no one to confide in for the fear of it all falling apart and being for nothing, Farina's not just a phenomenal actor, but an incredibly inspiring and strong leader as well. Yes. Huh. yes. I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? <sighs> if that's the case... She's right. I could confide in her, couldn't I? But if things don't play out as expected, the people of Fontaine will be the ones to pay the price. No, 
Alina, you shouldn't be selfish. <sighs> but what if... What if it's really all right? Selena, you've worked so hard for so, so long. Surely it would be okay to put yourself first for once. Just this once. Is it such an outrageous thing to do anyway? To find someone in whom you can confide your frustrations and sorrows? Surely it could not hurt. If you let this opportunity slip through your fingers, it might never come by again. Think about it. Long and hard. Nothing to say. I am Farina, the Archon of Fontaine. Everything will surely get better. All you need to do, dear spectator, is to witness my performance until the curtains fall. What makes it even more tragic is the fact that even now, even after all that Farina has gone through and sacrificed, giving up not only her position as Hydro Archon, but her humanity and 500 years later her divinity through folklores. All you've done throughout the years is just so you can sacrifice yourself at the very end. Is that a good portion of the people of Fontaine still resent her for not preventing the prophecy and the lives lost? I'd be overjoyed if the people here could find it in their hearts to forgive me. But they're more likely to unleash a tirade of vitriol against me. Which, of course, I completely understand and accept. Yeah. I can tell people are watching me. I'm sure some people here see the idea of someone coming to Poisson dressed as the Hydra Archon as extremely disrespectful. I used to be terrified of the gaze of other people, especially when they had suspicion or resentment in their eyes. I guess I wasn't quite ready for this after all. Which, as a player, is so gosh darn frustrating, seeing how much she's gone through, how lonely she's been for so long, how much she's sacrificed just for the citizens of Fontaine to turn around and say the most cruel or gut-wrenching things about her and her character. I can safely say I've never disliked NPCs from Genshin Impact more than I've disliked Fontaine NPCs. How dare you, Mr. Spears? You had me fooled. And you too, Mrs. Spears. Death to all of them. Oh. But even at the end of ends, even after the prophecy has been fulfilled and everyone in Fontaine has been cleansed of their sin and no longer at risk of returning to the ever-flowing waters of the nation, she doesn't take it to heart. Farina wishes she could have done more, but after her responsibility as Hydra Archon is lifted from her shoulders, 500 years of acting as Focal Wars is no longer certain of who she is as a separate entity at all. How you act like yourself, when from the moment you were born, you were destined to play God. Now that you're no longer needed, which Farina equates to freedom. Besides, none of these trials were the one that I'm looking forward to the most. Um, if I may be so impertinent, what kind of trial are you truly looking forward to? A magnificent, dramatic, and wondrous trial. A trial to end all things. <sighs> How could you hope to understand? How do you act like yourself when it was immediately rejected and heavily criticized upon first meeting the people you're meant to spend 500 years protecting? <sighs> the Maison Cardinalise has announced my accession, but this is my first time facing the people. What should I say to most appear like a god? To be honest, I still don't know. Perhaps I should first try to act natural. Ahem! Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the Opera Epicles. I'm sure you've all heard about how I have taken on the role of Hydro Archon. Indeed, I am Farina de Fontaine, your new Archon. In truth, I know little about becoming a nation's new god, 
But it will be my honor to guide you all. As the god Fosalor, the god of justice, I shall do all within my power to lead you into an age of fairness and justice. Once again, thank you all for coming. If you should have any questions or suggestions, please send them to the Maison Cardinalis. The future of Fontaine will require us to work together, after all. This should do it. I thought I might stammer, but thankfully, I was able to convey my thoughts just fine. Okay, and next. That's the new Hydro Archon. Is this some kind of joke by the Maison? I would have thought that a being that surpasses humanity would be a bit more... assertive. Hey, did you hear that? She even told us to send her suggestions there at the end. Shouldn't gods be all-powerful? She's being so... modest. What's the difference between her and an ordinary person, then? If you ask me, perhaps the succession didn't actually happen. She might just be a maison back puppet. Wait, what's going on? Why is everyone suspecting me of being a fake? Oh, this is bad. If I get exposed here, there'll be no saving the people from the prophecy. Right. Mir me said that I just need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Calm down, Farina. Think. Think. What do the people want? How would they imagine a god to speak and act? Assertive, with a strong sense of presence. One who can dispel all doubt. That is the character I'm fated to play. Never given the chance to look towards the future, nurture and develop dreams worth living for? How do you go back to what you were never able to have? After pretending to be someone else for so long and having that identity ripped away from you at a moment's notice, who are you really? This is a journey and struggle that not only will Farina have to deal with, but the citizens of Fontaine as well. It's not shown very well yet, and to be honest, I don't think the severity of their new situation has quite hit them yet. While Fontaine is currently in what feels like a recovery state, and the Archon quest at the moment is done until the next update, it's a journey I look forward to regardless, and I hope others look forward to it as well. My harsh judgment for the people of Fontaine aside, I do believe in reformation and the inherent good that we can do as humans, both for ourselves and others, more than anything at the end of the day. And with that, thank you for watching. The lack of sense of self and a true identity in Fontaine was something that struck a chord with me and has been almost all I've thought about for weeks on end. So hopefully I was able to express my thoughts properly and didn't just word vomit at you for however long this video is. But let me know what you think. Do you have hope for the future of Fontaine and its people? Do you think Farina will be able to live a happy life in the future with a growing support system? Do you wish that the Fontaine NPCs all dissolved into water? Is there anyone in Fontaine who's confident in their existence at all? Fortress of Meripede. It's a good place for me. What? Um, ciao. Anyway, so... Are there any key characters or moments that I missed that stood out to you? I'd love to hear your thoughts and theories as well. And lastly, thank you so much for sticking around and watching until the end. Watching and sharing these videos helps me out more than you know, so it's always greatly appreciated. But that's enough yapping for me, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs> you truly are the perfect human. My ideal.